Hey guys, welcome back. Now, I know, it's been probably, what, four months maybe since I last uploaded the video onto my channel. That's because, as you know, I was living in the US and I was working at Disney. Uh, but now I'm, I'm back in Australia and I thought I would uh, do a nice long video about my time working for Disney over in the US. This is for people who would consider what I did. Now, I did the Disney... Uh, international program and that that was when I actually lived in Orlando Florida I lived there for uh, all of 2019 uh, from the 12th of January uh, we're gonna start off with housing where I lived so where I live. Now, I lived in Patterson Court. Now, at Disney, they've got four housing complexes and they are Patterson Court, Vista Way, uh, Chatham Square, and The Commons. I believe now there is one more that you can apply for and that's uh, Flamingo Crossings Village. Uh, Patterson Court was the uh, best option for me. I was in a two-bedroom, five-person unit. My suggestion is that if you get given that, run to your apartment and claim the bedroom that has two beds. I would not like to live in a room with a bunk bed or be on the bunk bed. So I would try and get there ASAP and get into that room without a bunk bed. I shared with two Australian people and a New Zealander, first of all, and then about a month in, we got an American roommate. And then once his program was over, we got a French roommate. And once his program was over, we got another American roommate. So that was... Um, who I live with for the year. So I, I would always live with two Australians and a New Zealander. Now, how much rent I paid. So each week initially, um, from about January till about maybe Jul June or July, I paid 113 a week. That includes your room, bed, uh, electricity, internet, water, all that stuff. So th um, that's all included in the price you pay. Rent is taken out of your paycheck each week. So that does make things a bit easier. Then once I got to about June or July, the housing cost went up to about 119 a week. So that's all for housing for now, I guess. Traditions. That spectacular thing where you actually become a cast member at Disney. It's a four hour class and you like sit there and you talk about Disney um, as a company, Walt Disney World, uh, ethics and like, you know, uh, company policies, blah, blah, blah. It was four hours. It was paid. So, so we got four hours pay for that. So, so that was pretty good. Now, if you go to traditions, you must be in Disney look. Now, Disney look is Disney's appearance policy. If you saw my last videos, I had very, very long hair. I was n almost not let in because of my hair. So you must be in Disney look. Okay, where did I work? Now, I was given the role of attractions. Now, I worked in Tomorrowland, so that's the land in Magic Kingdom. I was put on a complex, it was called Rocket Tower. And in that complex was the Tomorrowland Transit Authority People Mover and the Astro Orbiter. So I worked on, on those two rides for the whole year of my program. I was lucky enough to get cross-trained in my extension at the theatres complex and that one included a uh, Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor and Carousel of Progress. So in the end uh, I was trained on four of the attractions in Tomorrowland. So that was very very fun, very very busy, very very uh, lots of people. So with training, if you get attractions as your role, you will be trained to open and to close your attraction. And that was over about maybe four, four or five shifts and then you would have your assessment day. As a participant on the program of the uh, International Author College program, you should be scheduled around 30 hours a week. I was scheduled around 35 on average to start, but the good thing is is that you can actually exchange your shifts with, with other cast members. I would trade for longer. And depending on your location, you may be able to give away your shifts. Transportation. To get to and from work, either have to have to drive or you get the company sponsored transportation. And, and that was through Transdev. It's just a fact, uh, Transdev is terrible. Uh, their buses are never on time. The buses break down. The buses catch fire. It's it's a whole thing. That was a very very negative part of the program taking the bus. So if you're American, uh, bring your car. If you live in like Washington State, bring your car. If you don't have a car, try and get rides with friends to and from work. Living with roommates, it was it was fine. It was okay, I, I guess. They will get on your nerves, no matter how nice they are, no matter how like great friends you are with them, they will get on your nerves. Not everyone's the cleanest people around. It's 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 fine. I freaked out a lot in the apartment while I was living there with the roommates because things wouldn't be tidy and I would just you know freak out and but that's fine. It's okay. Everyone's different, so it was all good in the end. I just. I just gave it a wipe over and it was fine. Do yourself a favor and make sure you know how to clean. 
because if no one knows how to clean inside the apartment, then you're doomed. Because inspections are a thing, and if you fail, you'll be charged a fee each. If you fail again, it'll be more each time. At least one person in the apartment should know how to clean good. Alright, now for the fun stuff, the perks of working for Disney. Now, you get a uh, free park admission to Walt Disney World and Disneyland in California, so that's always fun, but you do have blockout days. So, for example, we couldn't go to Hollywood Studios in Florida for the last month of our program because of the new ride, Rise of the Resistance. The blockouts usually aren't that bad for, like, Magic Kingdom or Epcot or, or um, Animal Kingdom, so... As well as free admission for yourself, you also get free tickets for friends and family who actually you have the same blockout dates as your pass so if you've got friends or family coming around and you want to you know just like let them into the park there we go we got great discounts so on like hotels and dining we got up to like 40 50 60 percent off we like ate I think we had almost every Disney restaurant. It was a good discount considering Disney, so that's always good. Depending on your location, you may have a cast celebration, and that includes music and like food and the, uh, uh, photo ops and meet and greets with characters. So I know Magic Kingdom did theirs in about I think May or June last year, so that was that was pretty fun. The family holiday celebration. Um, that's when you got um, snack coupons for yourself, dining coupons, uh, merchandise vouchers, like everything. Thing. Like you got good discounts and you got free snacks. So say you were at Magic Kingdom and you wanted a churro, give them a coupon and it's free. Yeah, I used mine actually at uh, Disneyland. That was a good thing because it was free food. So like, who doesn't love free food? Now to the cons of the program. As much as I love working for Disney, um, there were a few cons as well. Unfortunately, at every location across Walt Disney World, you are at the bottom of the barrel. You will not have a schedule bid or anything. Um, they will actually give you shifts what all the full time and part timers don't want so you don't really get a say in like you know what you want we get paid a bit less than full-time part-time even though we're doing the same work but so it's all for the experience apparently it's all it's it's fine <laughs> we don't get holiday pay so for example i worked on fourth of july i just got my like normal rate i worked on christmas and new year's i got i just got my like normal standard rate um and that's for every uh international and cp um who was working they, they just don't get that and back to housing you can't pick roommates anymore so i was lucky i know now you cannot pick your roommates it's all random which is a bit annoying but that's also one of the uh cons of the housing part of it okay how much did all this cost so how much did it cost for my visa how much did it cost for the flights how much did it cost for the insurance all these prices are in australian dollars for the visa i paid about in total probably 350 australian dollars that was that was for the visa and you can you can only get your visa from sydney melbourne or perth and you have to do it in person being from brisbane that was a bit hard but I got there, I got my visa, it was all sorted. Insurance in total was about $1,800 Australian. It's a bit hefty because considering there were other insurances you could have bought that were a bit cheaper, I felt like I was protected the whole time. That wasn't bad. It was all worth it in the end because if I got hurt badly, I could have just gotten my insurance to pay for it. So that was, that was how much the insurance cost. Flights, afterwards I went traveling. Um, so to Orlando, I paid 1,250. That was one way we did Los, uh, Brisbane to Los Angeles, Los Angeles to Orlando. That was all 1,250 Australian. Now on the way back, we did Orlando to New York, New York to Las Vegas, Las Vegas to San Diego. And then we did LA to Hawaii, Hawaii to Brisbane. That was about 800 American, so approximately 1,200 Australian. So in total, I paid about about 2,500 in total for flights. All right, now they are my recommendations, and that was my story of my international program at Disney World. Um, I hope you liked it. Um, I haven't done anything like this before, so I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, um, I play the violin normally, but, but, um, but of course I've been traveling so I haven't had time to upload any videos, but I'll be up uploading a lot now that I'm back in Australia. Thank you for watching this. Um, if, if you liked it, please subscribe, like, comment, share, whatever you want to do with it, I don't care. And yeah, hopefully you will uh, do the uh, program that I was doing, and if you choose to do it, please let me know down there. And yeah, if you have any questions, please let me know, and thanks for watching again. Have fun. Bye.